Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Observable Flutter. My name is Craig LeBenz, and I'm your host. And today we have a pretty exciting episode lined up, if I don't say so myself. Uh, I'm joined by Victor Lidholt, the uh, CEO, CTO, CFO, COO, and probably other things uh, of ServerPod, the back end, the full stack. Sorry, not just backend, the full stack framework for Dart and Flutter that if like me, you haven't tried either recently or in a while, uh, it is time to learn about. So, um, Victor, welcome to the stream. And uh, would you like to say a few words about yourself and maybe the project? Oh, I, I think you're uh, you're muted, Victor. We had a little stretch our legs break before we started. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now I am here. Yep. Awesome. Uh, oh, so yeah, yeah. A few words. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having me on the show. Uh, it's pretty awesome to be here. And um, yeah, my name is Victor. I'm the founder of ServerPod, but I am actually not all those things because we are building a whole team around ServerPod. So that's pretty cool. Uh, uh, so you've relinquished some of those titles. Yes, no <laughs> especially all, all the, the financial seas. stuff I also want to give <laughs> to someone else. <laughs> Paperwork is like the dark side of life, I, I feel yes. like. Yes, I refer um, to that all as life administration, and it's the worst. Yeah, so um, yeah, I actually used uh, Flutter for quite a long time. I was on the Flutter team. Uh, way back, uh, but um, I used Flutter since then to build my own apps, and I was really missing having a good backend for it. So that's where the idea for ServerPod Pod came from. So I basically uh, made a framework I wanted myself to to build my apps, and being able to use Dart for the full stack is pretty nice. And we tried to, you know, make it as easy as possible to get started, and really. Uh, ServerPod itself may be pretty complicated on the inside, right? It, it will analyze your code and build APIs and stuff, but we wanted the APIs to be very, very clean and easy to use. Mm. So I guess I'm, our aim is to do, you know, what Flutter does for app development to server development. Nice, nice. Uh, okay, so part of what you, part of what ServerPod offers is a really nice um you know really nice deployment story to get you know get everything running on google cloud uh you also right. support aws yeah. uh and today we're going to build a little thing i don't actually know what it's going to do yet uh we'll figure that out and yeah we'll figure that out and then we're going to deploy it to google cloud that's the goal right that's the goal Okay. All right. So we actually well, did some, yeah, quite a bit of work to get everything, like the whole story. I think uh, many other frameworks they are they have like they're focused on one specific detail. It's like you have maybe a database integration, or you have a server, or and then you have to build your APIs that works with another language or something. We wanted to make like the, that whole journey fit together really nicely. And like all the way from when you create your project to how you deploy it to the cloud. Uh, so, so that's like one of the goals with ServerPod to have like everything pre-packed for you. So, so it makes mm. the, uh, the system a little bit opinionated, which some people will like or some may not like, but um, I think it will definitely save people a whole lot of time. So I'm, you may not need all those bells and whistles from the start, but it's certainly nice to be able to, you know, pull them in when you need them. Like if we're talking about things like caching data or, um, yeah, having support for Redis um, to if you, when you need to scale something up to run on more servers, to have them being able to communicate with each other and stuff like that. It's just nice to. You know, not have to worry about those things 
that you will have to at some point worry about. And if you haven't thought about those from the beginnings, it can be pretty hard to integrate in the system. Yeah. Yeah, it absolutely can. Um, yeah, if you, yeah, it just absolutely can. If you if you don't think about scaling up front, then uh, eventually, you know, if, once you get some users, that problem can become a little more complicated to solve. Yeah. But if you then, if you think about scaling up front, it can bog you down and slow you down from kind of having something to actually get into users' hands. So yeah. of course, that's why frameworks like this are so great. Okay. Uh, should right. we start? I, I don't think chat is turned on. Um, I'm messaging people about that. Okay. All right. So folks, um, what I'm hearing is that you might have to refresh the stream to see chat, uh, to see the ability to say anything. So sorry about that, but it should be working now. Um, okay. Uh, so let's do it. Um, <laughs> all right. I see the first message in so people can see everything. Okay. Awesome. So Victor, I'm going to be driving. That's what we're going to do. And you're going to be my co-pilot. Right. So I'm going to switch over to uh, this screen. Oh, no, this isn't the screen I want. This isn't the screen I want. I need to share my window. Um, share a screen entire screen and it'll be this one and then we'll add this there we go that's it this is what we want all right um awesome okay so the adventure begins uh i'm going to i don't i don't even have server pod on the um on my computer yet i had tried it on a previous work computer but have never haven't tried it since upgrading. So right. this is the website for anyone who has not heard of ServerPod is brand new here, serverpod.dev. And all, I'm, uh, all I've am all i done so far is just go to the docs.serverpod.dev page and scroll down a tiny bit and I'm ready to install. So I've copied this and I have a terminal window that I think I'll move into the same space here and uh, make this a little bigger. I love how it makes the whole the whole thing bigger too. Like terminals are so archaic. I understand that this is how it needed to be in like the 70s or something, but I don't know why we carry forward that kind of silly functionality. Anyway. Right. Okay, so I'm installing. Now there is a little other setup that we've done just to save time. So um, let me, uh, well, I'll get to that in a second. Um, we both we created a database in Google Cloud. That was the big thing. Got that started because yeah. that takes a minute. Okay, so now we'll test our installation by running ServerPod. And well, it seems to have worked. That looks good. So, great. So we're pretty much ready to create a project there. <clears throat> Okay, so continuing to scroll down and we're kind of skipping over this. I did also download this Insights app. This is kind of your companion uh, introspector, database viewer, you know, whatever. Actually, I don't know about database viewer. I see uh, method yeah. calls here, like HTTP calls. Not, not yet, but uh, it's coming in the next version. So that's what we were working on right now. Curious though. That's pretty oh, cool. oh yeah, yeah. So it actually will, it's pretty cool how it logs. We can walk through that in a bit, but it will, um, you can uh, log every query that happens and it will actually store a stack trace together with the query. So it's very easy if something is slow to find pinpoint those points. Mm. Um, or, I mean, it can be other reasons to, to find stuff. Um, all right. So I'm running the create command, which yeah. is doing a bunch of stuff. Does a bunch What's of the stuff? network connections that it asked me about? Huh? It asked me to if a, a Dart app could accept incoming network requests. You know what that was? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I is it a question from from the comments or or did it? Oh no, it was. Uh, it just popped up on my screen briefly. I just clicked through it instinctively, and then it was like, oh wait, I should ask about that. Okay, I'm not sure what that was. Okay, so um, oh. you have like MyPod. That's a great name for an app, by the way. <laughs> uh, yeah, I do have my server pod. Yeah. And it's got the server. And all right, so oh, this so, is, yeah, these are the commands to run everything. Yeah. 
Exactly. So if you go into the MyPod server directory there, and uh, basically what this does is um, first you start Docker, and Docker will run your Postgres and Redis um, for you. Because you, you can you can potentially run this. Oh, you're already in there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you can potentially run this uh, just you know with a local Postgres installation, but it's pretty tricky to install Postgres. I don't know if you've tried that ever, but it's way oh, way yeah. easier with Docker. So that's why we choose to do it like that. On Mac OS, there's a nice companion app called Postgres .app that's really really nice, but oh, it's, yeah. it beat out. Uh, it doesn't beat Docker. It's older than Docker. Right. <clears throat> so, okay. So, so if I run the... Yeah. So let's let's try that. Okay. Um, so I've CD'd in. So oh, I didn't CD into my server. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll you have Docker Compose. Yep. Um, so that was so a bit I, of the. Oh. Okay, that looks good. Okay. And uh, the touch thing makes it run in the background. So it actually mm -hmm. uh, will run until you shut it down. And then you just can run the bin main there. The server. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we have the server running shortly. Yeah, uh, that looks good. Okay. There we go. Everything worked. Uh, so basically, what this does, it will start, ServerPod runs three different servers. So you have mm -hmm. um, uh, the main server uh, running, and then it's have the insights server, which um, the app will, that you downloaded will connect to. Uh, and then it runs a web server too. So the web server is optional if you, sometimes you want to have a, an, a web server. Uh, it's pretty cool that you can use like the same system to build your whole you know, web app. So I use this for building a news app. And then you also want to have web pages, right? With that you can link the news stores to. So you can build that with actual, you know, templates and HTML. That's still a little so bit does, experimental, but... Um, God. So Does web server use um, Shelf? Uh, it doesn't use Shelf, none of this. Okay. So it uses but is it not, it's similar, not essentially, I'm guessing? It's very similar, yeah. So we gotcha. may change to Shelf, who knows, in the future, it's possible. Um, gotcha. I think I may okay. have started this project before Shelf was soft. Um, um, so, oh, wow, so, that's done. <laughs> so what you can so actually we... do now to, to try this out is um, if you um, open another terminal uh, and you can try to run that Flutter app. So, so mm. when, when you run ServerPod create, it will create three uh, packages for you. So it will create oh, the God. server and it also creates an app that is all hooked up. Uh, so I, I would typically run, uh, I think it may be smarter to do the web if you do Chrome. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, because if you do Mac, you will need to do a few extra setup steps. Oh, like, yeah. Mac like the application. The entitlements. I, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that does take an extra. Um, I, I saw some questions there in the chat also. Yeah, so we, we, had, can... we had one. Uh, will server pod... Oh, it just the app launched and covered what I was reading. Um, will ServerPod support deployment on Render, Railway, Fly, uh, or other Heroku alternatives? Uh, right. So right now we have support for AWS and um, uh, Google Cloud that we made like really smooth. Uh, but it basically creates a Docker container for you with with the server. So wherever you can run that Docker container, wherever you can run dart you can run server pod the only thing it will need is a connection to a postgres database and you will be set so nice. yeah yeah so you've got you have really robust uh installation like easy installation support on aws and gcp um yeah. but it, it it's very possible to to roll it oneself elsewhere definitely yeah nice Okay, are we ready to test what this is doing? Yeah. All right. Uh, well, my name is, in fact, Craig. Okay, so how do we see proof uh, that this <laughs> made it to the server? <laughs> All right. If you, if you look at the server log there, um, I think it will have 
tell you that in you made a method call to example hello. Mm. So when you set it up, it comes with a single. Um, basically, you build server pod around endpoints. So if you go to that server directory and open or unflip the library folder, so there 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 are a lot of folders in here. So you can look a little mm. bit overwhelming, but it's really just um, one a, a few directories that you need to look at. If you unfold source. Um, there should be an endpoints directory. Mm, okay, all right. And you open up the example endpoint. So this is sort of the starting point for the endpoint. Uh, and you can see here, this this is the hello world method. Okay. So I'm sure that all of this, all of this, uh, these comments in this documentation explains what we can do here. But wh right. where does this endpoint get connected to everything? Right. Uh, so. You can, in the endpoints directory, you can create any number of classes there. Um, <clears throat> and you, they should extend the endpoint class. Uh, and the, in the mm -hmm. endpoint, in, in your end, so this is, you have the example endpoint, which will mm -hmm. then link to example. And then you have the methods that you add. So you have a hello method there. Okay. Um, and the methods you add need to have a specific signature. They need to start. The first parameter needs to be a session object, uh, okay. like session. Uh, and then you can use um, all primitive types. Uh, and then you can use types that are serialized by server pod as well. So we mm. can look at that in a, in a second, how you do that. It's, it's okay. super simple. And the same. Uh, objects you can use for parameters. You can also use for return types. Uh, so so okay. this is like the very simple, most simple example, right? You just return mm -hmm. another string. Mm -hmm. uh, but we can build something a little bit more interesting here. Uh, so, But yeah. you, you can right. just try to add another method here if you want to do a like hello to, maybe. And, uh, how tricky or, would it be to return a map? A map? If you have that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, you can do future and then the map and string. Uh, so uh, you cannot use like generic objects, unfortunately. Um, oh, so, so should I use dynamic or we have to choose another it, string or? You can only use objects there that you can serialize with server pod. Uh, oh, so, okay. so, so, so that's, that's the restriction here. Um, so you, you can have another string, for instance, or an integer in there. Okay. Um, so what, how do you handle kind of complex JSON that is, um, has mixed types, uh, so put it in an object and have that be serializable. Yes. Uh, that's how you do it. Uh, I think we may, okay. um, add support for dynamic types in the future too. It's, uh, okay. it wouldn't be too tricky, but we, something we haven't done yet. Goodbye. Okay. All right. Sync, and then we'll return a map that says <laughs> goodbye and name. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, so what you need to know, uh, what you need to do now is when you uh, make sure you save that file, and yep. then you uh, in the terminal you need to run server pod generate. Okay. Let's see which. This one, I'm trying to remember. The, so this one is Flutter, and this one is the server. All right. So server pod. And do I run it in the server folder? Yep. Okay. Server pod generate. Great. Very uh, terse and succinct output. <laughs> right. Uh, so if you if you know go go to the um, um, to your uh, let's see the. Um, the, the Flutter app. Yeah, oh, it's smart. Oh, yeah. Running, yeah. running the server. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, if you look at the code for the Flutter app. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so not this one. So close you. Lib main. Yeah, that's a good place. So you may need to do um, either restart the analyzer here. We haven't, maybe that's something you know how we can do automatically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Or run pub get. Otherwise, if we not know of the right. changes, the change we so, just made. Yep. 
so basically what happens when you run server pod generate it will look through your server code so it runs the dot analyzer to analyze your server code and pick out the changes you've made mm -hmm. uh, and then it saves those changes maps everything up in the server but it also maps it up in the my pod client so that is that's a package that mm. your flutter app will import so so that contains the whole um uh Oh yeah, exactly. That's oh, my client. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So so that's how you refer to to the client. Uh, so if you do, I think is it Command Shift P? Yeah. If, if I reload server. the window, it should see it. <laughs> okay. Um, later. There, so we start start analyzing. Maybe that worked. So so if you check, right. yeah, call cool, hello and. Yeah. yeah, that's easier. Okay, so now we want to call goodbye instead. Yeah. So I'm just going to. So, so you can see there. Yes, uh, oh, yeah, you're so fast. <laughs> goodbye. So this result must be a. What's the issue here? Oh, string, string can't be of type string. Yeah. Oh, result message. <clears throat> right. Yeah, so this you can put be... that in, uh, in a string, for instance. Or, yeah. Result. That works. We'll just grab the name, yeah. uh, and then it's still going to say hello, right? In uh, the... Right. Where, where does that get dropped in? So, so, so this is just a super simple app that will show the uh, the yeah. results. Yeah. Yeah. We try so to keep the example like as easy as possible, so it's not super fancy. Yeah, no, that's that is reasonable. Okay, so I'm gonna run it in Flutter again. It's still gonna say hello. It's still gonna, um, yeah, <laughs> not be visually different. <laughs> but we should be able to see. I'm guessing. We, you know, we saw the the method call on the server logs here, right? And it said hello, and this time it'll say goodbye. All right, we had a good question that I want to pop up. Well. This builds, though even it did just finish. But uh, Victor, do you want to field this one? Nope, wrong one, wrong one. Though we can come back to that. Uh, oh man, where did I did I lose it? Maybe I just saw it, but it wasn't starred. Okay, well someone asked. Oh, here we go. This is the question. Uh, oh yeah. So actually, the name Serverpod. I made that before Riverpod. <laughs> by by like a couple of months so i started server for like a long 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 time ago so um it has nothing to do with ribpod it's just like a coincidence but the, the name is more my thinking was that it's like a server but everything is like contained in oops sorry in a pod um that has like the whole everything you need um and uh, originally it was more like a placeholder, but it kind of stuck with people. So I figured, why not? It's an okay name. <clears throat> We've got our method call here. Um, uh, I yeah. I have a funny funny story, by the way, that I'm going to try to tell as quickly as I can. <laughs> In my experience, any temporary name that you use and you hope to discard and like swap later will never get replaced and you'll use it forever. So an old company I worked at, I was, I made up some algorithm and I just like pulled it out of thin air about how to rank these different objects that we had in our database based on customer popularity. And I didn't know what to call this algorithm or like literally the column in the database. And I was just feeling cheeky. So I called it the awesomeness score. And I thought for sure that name was so silly. No one would ever use it. And years later, the awesomeness score remained like a thing that people talked about all the time. Like very serious people would be in meetings and be like, well, this one has an awesomeness score of blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like, about right. <laughs> you know, whatever name you pick will yeah. be the name that is used. Anyway. I uh, guess so. Okay. So we've added this goodbye um, method call and we are seeing uh, it returned or we're seeing it called. And actually, because in the server, I just realized you actually, the hello came from here. It didn't come from the UI. That's why uh, once I didn't include 
goodbye in the, the payload part of it because I'm only using the goodbye key and thus it's just grabbing the name. That's why uh, we just saw test and not hello test anymore. Right. But it's working. Yeah. Okay. So what is, uh, what's some like something cool we can do? All right. I figured maybe we can try to build a, a small to do app. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, uh, oh, also the insights app. I should. Uh, oh, yeah. Let's, let's have a look at that. Yeah. Let me find, let me grab this uh, applications. Insights. I don't know how to scroll through the alphabet. Oh, no. It's server pot. Yeah. That's why it's not showing up in the eyes. Open oh, yet. Right. I know I did download it from the internet. Okay. All right. So I I hope yeah. that your terms and conditions are fair and just. Yeah, we are not collecting too much data. Do I have to fill these it's... out? Yeah, I'm sorry about that. That's okay. But I'm just going to fill them out off, off yeah. screen. Makes sense. Um, create account. We're adding uh, Google Agreed. sign in for the next version too. The adventure continues as I now have to validate my email. Okay, there it is. Got the code. Things are looking up. Verify email. And we're in. Nice. Okay. Okay. So you need to so add a project add here. A project. Okay. I'm going to do this off screen as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see here. I'm going to also. <laughs> How uh, high is the awesomeness score for a server pod? 10 uh, out of 10, question. obviously. <laughs> 10, yeah, I agree. Now, that was actually, uh, that, that one was a... Uh, just an unnormalized number where higher was always better. Uh, <laughs> so right. 10 out of 10 would be a awesomeness score of one, which would be extremely low. So oh, <laughs> <laughs> 10 out of 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0.00001. <laughs> All right, what am I doing here? Oh yeah, I'm clicking into the project and I'm finding um, my pod, it was called. And then I should I choose the top level folder? Um. Yeah, you can choose either the top level folder or the server folder. Both should work. Okay, I'll just pick the server folder. Where did that window go? There we are. Here we go. Select. Hey, hey. Okay, so, right, cool. <clears throat> so if I you, click another button, would it show up? Not really yet. So um, the thing is, mm. you're not really logging anything here. Uh, by default, it only logs errors not to like, bog stuff down. Uh, so, But you, if you click log settings in the top right corner. Oh, oh okay. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, you can say log all sessions there and save. And if you now send to server and click the reload button up in the top left corner, uh, there is your session. Nice. So what's pretty cool with the with Insight session log here is that it will group your logs by session, which makes it much, much, much easier to, to follow your logs, right? Because uh, if you have like thousands of users doing stuff simultaneously and you try to go through right. a text log where everything is gambled up, that can be super hard to find. Right. Uh, so how about we try to add something in the server so we can actually log something that's more than just a session. Okay. That could be uh, a fine. Yeah. So if you go Should to we... your example endpoint and uh, look at the goodbye method that we're calling right now, uh, so you, the session object will contain lots of things that are, it's sort of the context of yeah. where you are at. So here you have uh, logs session.log uh, and mm -hmm. you can write a little message here but through the session you can also access the database or uh, send messages uh, to other servers uh, or whatever you want 
Uh, By the way, this is supposed to be read in the Mrs. Doubtfire voice. Well, hello. So right. let's log this and see. You um, need to restart the server here. Yeah, I'm really struggling to remember which tab is which in the. Okay, that one's Flutter. Uh, there we go. So that's something and... we, we plan to add. It's like hot reload for the server, too. It's not yeah, there yet, nice. but it would be nice to have. Okay, so now I'm going to send this to the server. Um, yep. I'm going to come back. And I have to click refresh again? Yeah. Okay. You have a second session there, and you can see your log. This is Doubtfire is in the house. Right. Uh, okay, so one second here. There is just a a mountain of, of questions building yeah up we can we can um, work through some of the questions yeah That's let's cool. um all right i'm gonna i'm gonna bring them up in as rapid fire away as i can here my sequel yay or nay uh so um i mean you can use anything you can use with dart uh but like the built-in support is only postgres at this time okay so i would say that is a that's functionally a no for for MySQL. Yeah, I guess if you want to have all the niceness, you will not have that. But you can obviously connect to any database from Dart. Also, Postgres is really good. Postgres is really, really, really good. Yeah, we highly it's recommend the best one <laughs> or highly, the one we highly. like the most. Yeah, well, you like it because it's really good. Okay, um, let's see. Looking at the next one, the doc said we can choose the server roles oh yep. yeah okay this one's a good question to, to cover right so you can run server pod in like different modes so uh, the the sort of default mode is run, to run it as a monolith where the server contains the state but you can also run it serverless which allows you to use it on google cloud run or uh, is it called fargate on aws so basically then you just use it as a container but the, the, the sort of drawback there is the server cannot keep a state as mm -hmm. those servers are like added or removed. You don't really know when and where. So you need to save all the data e either to Redis or Postgres if you use that option. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but but uh, uh, for if you do like a simple app, um, that's definitely a good option. If mm -hmm. you want to do something like a multiplayer game or where you have lots Not of internal gotcha. communication, then you probably want to run it as a monolith. Gotcha. So, yep. so you, you got both options, basically. We, we wanted to make that possible to run everywhere. Um, OK, this is a good one. Uh, is Does the session equal request response from Node? Oh, good question. Uh, I don't exactly know. So the session, uh, you, you oh. can get like the HTTP request from there. It's stored with the session. So you have like all that information, but you also have like the uh, logging, database, um, caching, uh, inter server communication, all that stuff is in the session object. Authentication. Um, so yeah, the, re the request response thing. So I think request from node REQ is a the sum of all of these things, right? Because all right. request has all of your session stuff and all your parameters. All right. So that would be request in Node. And then response in, in Node, you you write something like rest.send and you put your yeah. payload in here. Okay. And your, you know, the function here or the the mechanism here is to just return. So your later somewhere else server pod must be kind of, you know, it's calling goodbye. So it gets the um result from something dot goodbye right and it passes in the session that it's figured out and then the other parameters right right and then you're gonna server pod is doing some other equivalent of rest dot send a result like that yeah so basically we streamline a whole bunch of those things that you typically need to do in many other uh, frameworks we need to like mm -hmm. form your responses here you can just return dart objects uh, which is makes it, you know, you, you save a lot of code and there's also mistakes that can go into there. Uh, in my experience, it's hard to keep everything up to date when you change versions and stuff like that. So it's really nice to have that just generated. All abstracted away, yeah. Yeah. 
uh, just just a method we return the to return the goods. Um, Okay, another good question here. Is there yeah. any need to use state management with ServerPod? Uh, not really. I mean, um, you can you can save any stateful information wherever in the server you want. Could be like in a global variable if you want to, but or um, I would recommend like some sort of singleton object if you store store state in the server. Now, are you? Uh, answering this question from a perspective of server-side code or client-side code? Okay, for client-side code, obviously you probably want to use some sort of state management there. Um, so um, yeah, you can use whatever. It's uh, There's no limitations. It's uh, We don't really care too much about what you do on the, the front-end side. It's so many different preferences. So we just wanted to make sure it works with everything. Uh, and we haven't made it work specifically for Riverpod or specifically for you know set state or a block or anything like that. It just you have to plug that into the structure that you like the most. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know from the uh, it's, I think that that's definitely the correct approach that ServerPod should take on the front end. Is you're you're a data communication layer, but there's still right. you know solve state management. However, on the front end, um, and it, it, there's there's just nothing even like philosophically that could prevent it from working with anyone's favorite solution. No. Um, and then on the back end, especially, you know, if you're in a monolith and you have like a game, for example, then obviously you're highly stateful. So in that case, everything I'm about to say changes, but in a typical, here I'll put air quotes around typical web app, you know, HTTP is considered a stateless protocol. Right. So every request just wakes up and like starts from scratch and has no yeah. idea about anything. And then like, it's technically a lie because cookies and like the session bring a little bit of state with it. Um, but you know, the server like wakes up for a request and then goes back to sleep and wakes up for a request. So every time a request comes in, it's got to be able to do everything from scratch, whether that's pull some data from the database or pull some data from Redis or like whatever's, you know, whatever is kind of going on for that request. Um, and then that state doesn't outlive the request. It just, some stuff gets returned to the server and then everything on, or sorry, some stuff gets returned to the client and then everything else on the server basically just dissipates and gets garbage collected. Yeah. So that whole concept of state management that we all use on the client, if you do have a stateless uh, app and that's kind of, you know, you're just using something like HTTP, then you would, you would, not have that kind of state management on the server because that's juggling this kind of long lived uh, bunch of different interactions from the user and like blending in, okay, what did they just do versus what did they, the last 10 things they did, uh, yeah. that just doesn't happen. So there may be cases where you want to do some of that stuff. So say we were building a new app with ServerPod before and it takes like maybe a hundred database requests to build a front page because you need to pull comments from different places. And uh, and that like front page doesn't really update that often. So you can just store that in the cache. And mm -hmm. you can load it from the cache. And then you can apply specific data that is specific to you in that page um, uh, also. So it knows you are you. So it may add some extra data for your comments or some something like that. And then you can return that to the server. But like all the heavy work can potentially be stored for a little while, like a minute or a few minutes, depending on your use case. So that can really save a lot of um, Load, database yeah. performance because talking with the database is really the most expensive thing you do in a server. Everything else is like, Microsoft. people ask like, what is the performance of the server? It doesn't really, it's like compared to the database, it's like nothing. So it doesn't really yep. matter. Um, yep. I mean, it can be cases for sure where it matters, right? If you have hundreds of millions of users, I'm sure being able to cut off like a percentage of that will make a huge difference. It would help, yeah. for, for most cases, it's like, yeah, it doesn't matter too much compared to everything else. Yep. All right. Um, got another question, and maybe we'll get to this one later, actually, but how yeah. to use relations? I'm assuming this is like Postgres relationships. And oh, rules okay. is ambiguous. Do you know? What, do you have a sense of what rules might mean? Uh, I am not sure. I mean, it can be relations to other tools also. I, I mean, you can oh. use 
with, with ServerPod, you can use any sort of tools. Anything you can do with Dart, you can do with in ServerPod. So you can connect anything there. Uh, for our database, uh, we haven't explicit support for um, joins yet, but that's something we're going to look at adding. Uh, so, so you have to do that in like a few steps uh, currently. Um, mm. But you can also obviously write your own custom uh, uh, SQL code. Queries, so you can do, yeah. and if you need it for performance reasons, or whatever you can do, whichever queries you want. Uh, what's your wire transfer protocol? Protocol. So it's, I guess, it's kind of similar to gRPC, but it's not using right, right now. It's using JSON. So we're looking at maybe doing a binary format for promote performance too. Okay. So gRPC have packed things together a little bit more performant. But mm -hmm. it's not that huge of a difference when you apply uh, uh, SIP compression to it. So by default, ServerPod will SIP mm, your the GSIP, yeah. So so it's it's really pretty small the payload anyway. Uh, and and is I, it um, is it HTTP even like two point or WebSockets? How is it connecting? Oh yeah, so. Um, it has support for WebSockets as well. So if you do real-time communication, mm -hmm. it uses WebSockets. Um, uh, and you can, then you can pass like any sort of objects that are serializable by server pod to the client or to the server. Uh, so, so that's actually a really smooth experience as well. Um, right. But, but, um... All right. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought you were walking down. <laughs> All good. Um, okay, let's um, we with questions. Honestly, getting all the way to a to do app might be a little challenging. Let's yeah. just save one thing to the database. Sounds good. Oh, which I guess could be like a to do, but maybe we won't like do crud and chain, you know, updating yeah. and and whatnot. But let's just save something to the database. Yeah. Um, and maybe read it from the database and deploy to Google yeah. Cloud. So I, I I guess like reading and writing stuff to the database is like yeah, a one liner, yeah. but um. Oh, it great. may be a little, a little bit more, <laughs> a little bit more work we... to make it work on the flutter side. Right, true. So, how do we how do we start with adding a model? Let's do that. So, so let's start with that. If you flip out the protocol folder, close the on the, uh, and That's there. in the server. Yes, server and source. Oh, here we go. Protocol. So there's an example there. Uh, so this is like a, a YAML file. So basically, this is how you define your objects in, in ServerPod for serialization. Okay. So we already have one. We have and one. It, it's called example. We haven't connected to a Postgres database yet, right? Also, No, we have not yet done. Uh, well, it's the service connected to Postgres by when you're running it now, but... We will also need to add a table if we add tables. Oh yeah, because it generated this Docker Compose file and this right. is how we launched the database so it knows the connection. Correct. Yeah, and then so see how like easy that was? Password. Yeah, nice. I didn't even crazy. notice. I forgot, yeah, it snuck right by me, just <laughs> tiptoed on. <laughs> okay, great. Right. So, so yeah, have we, we generated this table yet? Yeah, so maybe we can just create a new YAML file there that we call, like, it could be a to-do. Oh, so in the protocol folder. OK. Uh, you, yeah, that's perfect. And then you need to say uh, a class oh, at the top. So we can call that, call that to-do. Perfect. Yeah. And then you add fields. fields right? So that should be indented to the left there. So fields does not get indented. Okay. Yeah. Right. Correct. And then, uh, so I guess we'll just description name. Yeah. Perfect. And that's the string. And, and let's 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 do the is done boolean. Yeah. Bool. Yeah. Just like Dart. Okay. Oh, okay. Nice. So so um, <clears throat> If we want to make this into a database table, we also need to connect a table. So the way we do that is uh, under class, you can just add table. And uh, so over oh, right here, table, and then you can go to do with uh, perfect. Yeah. Okay. And so then how do we run? 
Uh, now you save that file and you do a uh, server pod generate. Great. That's easy enough. And it says done. So now we have all the code for this. So it actually generated some uh, SQL code for us here. Uh, so if you go up a little bit in my pod server directory there, there's a generated folder that we will have, mm -hmm. want to have a look at. And uh, yeah, so th these are like the actual generated, the code that's generated by server pod on the server side. If you scroll up a little bit more, so this is typically you don't need to to modify that code, but if you- Yeah, so sorry, where, where, where am I scrolling up to? Yeah, there's another generated folder right above your- cursor. Oh, yeah. I see it, I see it. Okay, uh, and which one do we look at here? Tables? The tables. So this is your to-do table code. Mm. So you just copy that and run that in Postgres and it will create a table. So what we're doing for the next version, this will actually, you can do migration. So you will be able to do server pod migrate and it creates a migration that you can run when you start the server or you can actually connect to the server, run the migration while the server is running. If you want like zero downtime. So that, that would be a super cool feature actually. Uh, but we're not quite there yet, but we will be. So here right, you need I to figure it. out. Loaded uh, post to code to show. Yeah. Uh, did you connect to the... Um... Database my pod doesn't exist? Yeah, it does. Does uh, it not? So oh, do we need to create the database? Yes. Uh, so it, okay. No, 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 no. It, you, the database nope. is there, um, but I, I don't think you're connected to the database from that one. Yeah, I tried to so, connect. So this is using... on. So uh, you should connect on. If you can, you see the settings there. Yeah. So I did localhost yeah. my pod yeah. Postgres. Yes. And I copied port, in that password. The port should be eighty ninety. Uh, I know. Why'd you change that? <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe that. Okay, now you're in. Uh -huh. So basically, we wanted to pick some ports that are not commonly used for other stuff. Okay, so now you have the table. Perfect. To do. There we go. Yeah. Looking good. All right, nice. let's get something in there. Let's do it. Oh, 8090. Yeah, there it is. Staring me in the face. Bit of yeah. snake, it would have bit me. So you can actually find this. There's a config folder in your server that have like all the configuration data that server produced. You can, you can, uh, if you. Well, this isn't very helpful now, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's right on your left. <laughs> if you scroll up a little bit, there's a blue folder. Oh, here we go. Oh, folder. And here you have uh, development. Uh -huh. So, <clears throat> so you can change the ports here if you want to. Nice. Okay. So cool. uh, you have the da nice. database there, and then there's a passwords file where all your passwords are stored. Very cool. <clears throat> okay. So we've made the thing. Yeah. Now we need to uh, let's make an endpoint. Yep. That writes to it. Um, right. So instead of goodbye, maybe this will be add to do. Perfect. And we only um, had a name. Yeah. So you could potentially pass in a to do here. Yeah, that'd be cooler. Um, mm -hmm. Perfect. And then did I generate that class already? Yeah, it should be. Is it giving you a warning? To do dot dark. Okay. Well, it sees it. Um, so maybe it's not imported. Uh, if you scroll up in that window, Here yeah, generate the protocol. Nice. Okay. So I saw a session.db. Uh, yeah. So there are shortcuts for for the database um, tables. So what you can do is basically if you uh, there are static methods on the to do class that will help work with that to do dot uh insert insert maybe. could be good 
and it takes Attachment a session, and, and then you just add an item. item. <laughs> and right, you put an, a wait in front of that, probably. Yeah, does this you return a future? Oh, interesting. So how do we get the ID that this used? Oh, yeah. So we, we are going to return the ID. We're actually changing that. But after you've done the okay. insert, uh, that item will have an ID that is set. Oh, gotcha. OK. So here we could return. Um, just return the item.id, I guess. No, let's return the whole item. <clears throat> I think right. that'll be cooler. Uh, so you, and we just need to change this yes. to the to do. Yeah. Perfect. Cool. All right. This is that. Uh, yeah. and, and now you just need to run the server pod generate. Oh, whoops. Uh, I clicked commands the wrong to do sort of update your protocol. All right. Nice. Mm -hmm. Done. All That's, right. So if you go to your app. Oh, uh, here? But probably the code. Uh, oh, okay. the code, yeah. 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 All right. So let me close this. Uh, someone asked, by the way, what did I use to connect to Postgres? That's called Postico. And I don't know if it's available for Windows. I think a Mac specific developer. Yeah, I think that's a Mac one. But there, there are like plenty of other alternatives. Yeah. Uh, okay. So the client, well, not the generated client, Flutter. Um, Main file. Oh, so we we are just. I see. We are still all in the lib directory. The other one was had some with a, another top level directory now. Oh, that's because ah. it was next to bin. That's right. Okay. So uh, I guess I should add. I think you just no, need, need to add the to do class. It's already there. It's already there. Uh, so, what you need to do is probably restart that. Uh, maybe. Mm. Maybe if you have them in, open at the same time, that will. Uh, restart if you me. Oh, the analysis uh, engine? Yeah, possibly. This would yeah, be really nice to run this command. This seems nicer. Would be nice if that Any of the, the, like, happened. Any of the little things that I. Oh, sorry, was that? I, yeah, so you can add an insert method there, for instance. Yeah, we'll call this save to do. And yeah. it's going to take a string. It'll be the name. And then we're going to make it to do. Nice. Uh, oh, I guess we can maybe we'll just not take a string and we'll make it to do with the value. Yeah. So here we'll say um, final yeah. unsaved to do equals client that example dot save to do why is that an under uh yeah no um okay oh, it's literally just grabbing this token ah okay so i think it just i think it didn't update save to yeah well what did we call it oh it's add to do that's the and then you just pass in an item there so the name is going to be uh, the text editing controller value. And nice. then the is done is going to be false, of course. All right. All right. So we have we an need an await there. To do. Oh, it's not unsaved anymore. Now it's saved. I was going to make a to do object and then pass it uh, in. But then we made the to do in the uh, right in the parameter spot. So yeah, now we have a saved to do. We don't need this anymore. And so now it's going to be uh, saved to do. And then can we like have a to do dot JSON or something? Uh, yeah, if you just put the to do in there, the to string will output the JSON. Oh, okay. If, if you want to see that. Oh, save uh, save to do. Yep. OK, so save. Yeah to do is now what we have to put on our button right oh man is this gonna work let's hope so well, did you restart the out. server i think you did right uh i killed it it's didn't good if it's it running <laughs> <laughs> yeah <it's> probably <laughs> really helpful <laughs> and we so we we made the so let's, let's recap what we just did we added a class definition to to do.yaml then we generated that class by running serverpod.generate. Then we went to 
this top level generated folder next to lib and grabbed tables.psql or pg sql yeah and nabbed the uh Oh, no, oh, I didn't run this query as well. Everything will still work, but... Oh, yeah, that would be nice to have in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. where is this thing again? Every now and then I'm like... The I scroll use query, it, right? top, top left. Oh, yeah. I click around, I click in here. And I'm like, why are you uh, doing it? But I have to click exactly this. Anyway. Uh, okay, that's done. Okay, so we manually did the, the query migration. And yeah. you're adding... Uh, automatic migrations in the next release. So that'll be yeah. very cool. Then we, so we generated, we migrated, we added the table, then we restarted the server. And then on the front end, and remember, we don't have to add it to, we don't have to write the to-do class that's generated for us. Yeah. And then on the front end, we, um, on the front end, we just, cool. yeah, called the new method. Right. Oh, and we added a, an endpoint add to do that actually makes use of the to do class that was generated for us. Right. So we insert it. That's a method, a, a helper method you pointed out is on the class itself. It's a static method, obviously. Yeah. Here. And then we're calling add to do. And I confusingly am calling that from save to do. That should have been add to do. All right. Seems like it might work. Um, Let's try it. I think we're just ready to do it. Yeah. So. What, what do we need to do? Uh, did you restart the... Oh, the no. I, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm being silly. Because um, this is a to-do. So let's let's call it add database migrations. Okay. All right. Great. That's promising. Now we'll that flip over good. to Postico and go to the table and refresh. Oh, 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 oh. It's there. What? Go look at that a really cartoonishly large font size. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um, all right, now let's let's show all the to dos in our UI. Obviously, we need to do that. Let me let me see. Don't don't give me any hints. Let me see how quickly I can guess how to do this. All right. <laughs> um, so yeah, we've got a scaffold by so the column here. I'm not going to worry about overflow or anything. Like this should be a list view, of course, but. Um, I'm not going to worry about that. So to do dot, we don't, I'm hoping there would be a, a static method that read all the to do's because we had to do dot insert, but I'm also not even seeing, oh, I am seeing insert. Okay. So this is a really, really terribly unhelpful um, bit of completion here. Why isn't it giving me all the actual methods? I think you need to do this on the server. Oh, I can't load them. Uh, okay. I was imagining it was going to be different. I'm going to have to call the thing and return them. Yes. Got it. Got it. Got it. I was, Im I was imagining that I would have lots of stuff um, that where I could just make like a live network call, but actually this, this makes more sense. That would be bad. You'd be putting network requests in your, no, 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 it wouldn't be bad, but whatever. That's not how it is. It's fine. So yeah. load to use. And we're not going to take a parameter. And so here, this is going to be a list of to do's, of course. So now it's going to be to do dot. Oh, all right. This is, this is what we want. So maybe, maybe it's find and we pass like no parameters. And so there, there's no where clause and it just reads them all. That's what I'm guessing. Let's see. I'm going to also read the documentation on find, but it's generated code. So there isn't documentation on find, but there probably is here. So let's, let's uh, kick the tires on the docs a little bit. Pretend I didn't have you on the stream and <laughs> let's uh, figure out what I need to know here. So I want to look for database communication. There we are. And now I'm just going to search for find because I've already finding multiple rows here, here. And that is what it is. So company.find. All right. But there, what is this first parameter here? T company. I oh, if this is like a bit I of see something my... we need to fix there. Should be session. Session here. Okay. That, that makes sense. Uh, Got it. So a little make sure that gets fixed. Old code. All right. We are aren't going to pass any of these where things ourselves. So that's nice. So find session and that's it. 
<laughs> and we're just returning these. So actually let's let's make this the shorthand version. Okay. Well that's easy. So now back in our widgets, we've got a stateful widget. So maybe we'll do this in in its state, which doesn't exist yet. Got far without an init state. Uh, okay. So let's create a late list of to do's called to do's. I keep wanting to write toons. <laughs> uh, and this is going to be, no, this is client, right? Yeah, client.example. Client.example dot. Uh, load to do's yeah and this didn't take any parameters what does it want oh what do you want isn't defined probably because i need to restart the thing start the analysis server How, you didn't do the server generate there oh that's right that's right that's right yeah 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 all right I'm going to do this. So it'll be and dart in dart. No, main.dart. There we go. So no. now I'll stop forgetting to restart it after I generate. Smart. OK, it's done. It's restarted. Instantly found. Love it. Um, uh, yeah, so maybe it doesn't need to do that. Like, Oh, but this can't be. Uh, we can't have a future in here, so this will just be load to do's. And here we'll say future. Actually, you know what? Everyone does this, but we can do it. We can go old school. Remember, folks, there is not then that still exists, even though none of us ever use it anymore. Yeah. Why would we want to do that? In here, we can say to do's equals to do's. And just so it's a little less confusing, let's call this loaded to do's. But that was not necessary. All right. Uh, cool, cool, cool. And now, um, now we can make a change in our UI. Oh, instead of making this late, let's just make it a future. Then we use a future builder. It'll be not. Nullable. Oh, and then we can say, oh, see, now I do kind of, but this this won't be, this is fine, actually, because we're not going to await it. Ah, there we go. What are you upset about? Oh, but you late. said <laughs> I couldn't get away from late anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, actually, what I had before, I think that would have crashed. I think that would have not worked because the f it probably would have, Rendered the oh, first yeah. thing before the future was resolved. And so the late thing, it would have been an unassigned late variable. True. All right. So we're in the column. We're in our children. And now uh, let's have a, I don't want to do like a less comprehension in here. Easiest way to do this. Um, I guess we can say four. No, we have to, well, we have to use the future builder. That's what it was. And the future is to do's. And then the builder takes, God, I never use a future builder. Uh, the context and then the async snapshot, that's right. So this will say if snapshot dot has data, but if it doesn't have data, then return the loading indicator. Uh, circular adaptive, you need to be const. Then here we get to actually return uh, a. Should this be like another column? <laughs> we should really probably yes. explode this out into another widget, but I'm just not going to bother. Um, children. And here now is where we can say, uh, oh no, should we? Just put the, the for loop here. I haven't done this. What, yeah, you can put that in the list there, I think. Four. So should we say, but I kind of want to do four. Yeah, that should work. 
Yeah, okay. Gosh, I haven't done this in a long time. So for to do in to do's. Oh no, to do's is uh so we need like loaded to do's here. Oh wait a minute. I'm not even this variable need to exist. It is oh, just because it's the future, but then we don't access the to-dos from the variable. We access it from the snapshot. That's right. Method. method. All right, loaded to do's. Uh oh, it doesn't love me. Why is it? Or, oh, we have to give that a type. And then what's your problem? <clears throat> Can't be nullable expression. Why is it nullable? What type uh, do you think you are? Can you use uh, uh, type the. Uh, we have to. Maybe you need to type the future builder or something. I thought it would infer it from this. Yeah, one would think maybe. Oh, so now it's that, but it's just nullable. Did we make it nullable up top? No. Because it's late, maybe. Oh, it doesn't need to be late anymore. Oh, yeah, I kind of know that still needs to be late. Boo. Um, okay. Huh. What's the issue here? This is when I look over chat and realize that they all need. Yeah, okay. So I just need to cast it. Someone says, well, I'm, I'm really surprised we need to cast it. You can see that I haven't done a, I haven't used the future builder in a really long time. Yeah. So, all right. So here we're going to have a let's just I guess at this point use a text widget. It's gonna be really ugly. You can use the list title. It's a good, oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a way better idea. So leading, maybe. And that's one. So this could be text. Actually make this like a how do you uh, oh title yeah. is what you want, I think. Oh title? I was gonna put the name in title. Ah, uh, okay. To do dot ID. Uh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Oh, to string. All right. Looking good there. Ah, uh, right. Yeah. And then, yeah. So title is going to be text to do dot name. All yeah. right. None of them are done, so we don't have to do like check marks and whatnot. All right. Okay. I feel like there's a. Uh... There's a how, how big is the chance for this to work on the first try? <laughs> the chance is low. With like all the code around it. What was it? So chance. Restart. Oh, yeah, no, we are calling it. The button here it does now use save to do. That's right. Oh, yeah, it's there. Look at that. Now it needs a card widget around it, obviously. So let's wrap this in a anything and then just replace it with card. And then I'll start. <laughs> uh, pretty sweet. <laughs> pretty great. Now, next thing I want to do, because I don't imagine this is going to work yet. Um, oh, maybe in save to do's. Okay, wait, let's check here. What if in save to do's, we just call load to do's? So let's make this another method. Right. Actually, no, it's not even future. It's just load to do's. And now in save to do. So after we, oh, should we call set state in that? I'm just thinking if we call load to do's here, it's not going to update. Right. Because if we call set state, the future won't resolve yet. Then the future will resolve. So we kind of need to call set state here. Yeah. Really, right. Uh, maybe it updates with a future builder or no. I don't think so because the future won't ah, okay. change. Yeah. All right. So maybe this will work then. I guess we can test it, but I, I think it wouldn't have worked before. Right. Anyway, yeah. so we add database migrations and we want to add hot reload. 
Huh. Boom. It's almost as if he knows what he's doing, folks. Almost. <laughs> All right, so let's get rid of this set state. Yeah, let's just test that. I think without that set state, it's not going to work. We'll load yeah. the to-dos and then not show them. That's my theory. That's probably true. Restart. Um, so this will be the re refresh the UI. Oh, why did, how did that work? I feel like the when the future completes, it must do a set state. But we have a brand new future. Same variable, yes, but a totally different spot in memory. I don't yeah. think this future builder should know anything about that unless, oh, 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 I see why it works. It's really quite sneaky. So we call load to do's. This is worth unpacking. We call uh, it does a set state somewhere there. Yeah. Yeah, no. that's in a set state. So first of all, this gets uh this gets updated before set state actually calls. After set state, that's when the frame is marked dirty. That's when the widget tree is rebuilt. And so at right. that point, to do's has already been updated. All right. That's right. Um, someone says we can use a null assertion operator on line 116. Now, has line 116 changed since I, since you typed that? <laughs> I think um, it's where you did a cast, you could have done the exclamation point instead. Oh, Maybe. I think you're, oh, okay. It is typed now. And that did come maybe it was from this yes i don't love that we have to do this i should infer interesting so if we don't type the future builder then it just thinks it's an object hmm. it doesn't infer it from the type of that's a little stinky okay yeah. thank you for that cannot a hot tip all right uh well this is really great and now our last step oh yeah we got we got to clear the we got to clear the controller if we don't clear the controller what do we even do so our text editing controller dot text equals nothing so then this is going to be and then we have to refresh so uh empty controller after saving Great. And now we need to deploy to GCP. Right. Let's go. And we can see all these things in Postico. And soon they will be in Google Cloud. All right. Incredible. Uh, all right. Let's do it. Um, where's, how do I start? So I would, maybe we can start with the database. So we need to okay. set up all those tables in the database. So you need to be able to connect to the database. Got it. Uh, from that's Postico. A good, that's a good, that's a good. Um, so I think there. you need to, to okay, do so that, you need database. to add um, um, Oh, and no, all users. Okay, so I'm going to go back to Postico and set up the connection. Now, folks, we made this database just before the stream, and I saved the password. So I'll be able to make a new connection, new server. I so this... I think, have you added the IP number Oops. for your... Oh, you did mention that, and I haven't done it. I meant to. Yeah. Connections. Yeah. This is a little bit sneaky, too. Oh, no, I... I... Oh, it, it is available. Yeah, yeah, that is the public IP, but it will not allow you to connect unless you go to networking and add a network. Are you sure? I think we're going to be able to connect to this. I mean, you've done uh, this more recently than me. Are you like, you're totally sure? That's I'm like 95% sure. Okay, let's try it real quick. I'll try it out. So this is going to be uh, my pod server. And the host is this IP address. And the database was Postgres. And the user was Postgres. And the password is saved over here. 
So you may actually want to create another database on the database in um, in here. Use a different one. Yeah. So the Postgres is yeah. Server pod is a good name. Um, oh, you would think so. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> otherwise, the Postgres uh, database just keeps like the Postgres tables. So so you always have that database in there. Okay, I think you're winning. Hey, not connecting. Yeah. You win. You win. You did this recently. Yeah. Um, but it is enough to to add if you go to that connections tab. I really thought that was going to work. You can uh, see I guess it's like a security feature, so you will not be able to even if you have the password connect to your database from anywhere. Right. So how do I? Um... If you go to, if you Google like, what's my IP? You'll see your IP number there. Oh, so you, this you is, need, I have to put the IP here. Yeah, you're, you're from your, your public IP. Was this the same number? No, 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 no. So you need to, if you Google, what is my IP? Oh, I see. All right. Uh, you should Google oh, have a little. Four. This is the yeah, one I thought I was going to do it there. too. Yeah, Google usually puts yes, put that up on there, but yeah, I guess I you you have to have a chat with your coworkers. <laughs> so <that's just> <laughs> <it>. <laughs> All right, so this is actually just my local host connection. Yeah. Okay, and then save. Okay. I see what the issue was. I see. Uh, all right. While I continue to futz around with the database, right? You take this one. Does ServerPod yeah. have any built-in authentication or authorization? Something that allows us to block or allow access to endpoints based on roles. Yes, definitely. Um, so, yeah, we we bought like a, a built-in, very extensive authentication system. So it has support for social logins with Google, Apple. Um, but you, you can also restrict endpoints to uh, only signed in users or different roles. So yeah, it's very, very easy to do that too. I presume that's all documented. Yes. All right, we have our table, the um, production database all right so you need to add a server pod tables there too so if you one one up uh, here you have like all the tables for server pod there got it so there's a bunch of tables that we add so we use this for the logging features and for uh, statistics and health checks and authentication and you get like all those built in nice. with server pod so uh, nice. That's why you need to add those. Okay. All right. So, database has been uh, updated. It's ready. Mm -hmm. I bet now we need to go to production.yaml and make sure. Yeah, this our... needs to be up to date here. Uh, but you, I think you can. What you need to really change here is the um, database part. Okay. All of the rest is good. So, um, so I'm going to leave this one five four three two name. Okay, yeah, we did server pod. It's the okay. user still Postgres. Okay. Yes. Now, so, so, so I think connection here, right? Yeah, you need to let me check. It's a little bit special how you need to do so. that. Is it not just this? Because uh, this is going to be connecting from Cloud Run. Yes, if if you I can send there's um if you look at the documentation and deploying server pod um, and Google Cloud Run with GCP, it will show you an example how to do that because you need to do the dash cloud SQL and you need to set the Unix Unix oh, sorry Unix socket. Mm, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, yep. yeah. So so that's All an right. example of what that looks like. Nice, yeah, great, great job putting this in here. So, for anyone who's not used Cloud Run, actually, let me, let me give a quick primer on how all of this works. The connection string to um, 
to talk to a database on cloud SQL, which is Google Cloud's relational database service, is found right here. And this is kind of the magic string. It's your project name and then your region and the name of your instance, not the database, the name of the instance, which for me is the same. They're both just <laughs> called server pod. So when you have that, then you're ready to connect. Now, uh, the best way to connect to Cloud SQL is uh, over this Unix socket. And um, the way that works on Cloud Run is once you add a connection to a Cloud Run instance, which uh, I can show where that's done manually, and I bet his, I bet Victor, your scripts are going to do it. On Cloud Run, it always places the Unix socket at this magic directory. So it makes a directory called slash Cloud SQL at the root of the machine, and then the name of the next folder is um, the is the same database that you're connecting to, and then there's just this magic gobbledygook. So we would copy all of this. And you wrote database name here, but it is the serve. It it's well, it's a little confusing. The instance name is what it should yeah. be. Yeah. But but it also yeah. tells you to copy that string. But right, which will it's happen. It's just an example. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yep. maybe we should actually clarify that. Um, I bet like all okay. these things, if you get one of those wrong, it's kind of really hard because we are saying no. Doesn't right, yeah, it'll just much. be like, oh, everything's broken. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so so what I did is re copied the connection string from Cloud SQL, and then it's this middle part that I'm replacing with what I copied from the Cloud SQL console. Right. And then these values are still correct. Whoops. These values are still correct. That looks correct. Uh, and you okay. need to go into the passwords file there. Right, and add. Uh, uh, and then you have a deployment or production database. Oh, this is where you need to enter your password. My actual production password, okay. Yes. I'm going to pretend like the security of this is really important to me. And I'm yeah. going to copy it uh, in a different window. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Oh no, the last, this is really quite funny. The last character in the password is a closing quote. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. What a, uh, what a friendly password it generated. All right. Okay. Uh, make a Let's new... hope that works. <laughs> uh, I don't think it's going to. Um, Maybe you can do a backslash. That's not working. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, well, I don't think it's working. Sure. I mean, you can, you can add that to that password file. It's just a YAML. Like, yeah, it's it's not. Oh, yeah, it's just not okay. working. So this okay, is was... the raw password. It's like okay, we need a quote. Uh, we need to escape that. We need another quote, and then yeah. God bless it. Will you just put it in the right spot? And then everything is off. But this could be the syntax highlighting. Maybe it actually uh, I, I think maybe you need to put a backslash after the backslash to escape oh, that double? too. Yeah, there's one earlier too. P4 Wait, backslash backslash. Oh, here. Maybe. Yeah. I'm just no. going to make a password that doesn't have a. Yeah. That seems uh, easier. At the end. <laughs> <laughs> um, Okay, so I'm here, and users, uh, I think, is how this works. So it's probably to possible user. to do that somehow, but... Change password, generate. Just give me one without... Okay, that's a good one. I, know that. <laughs> uh, I guess they still need your IP number to access it, so... True. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Okay. Uh, all right, so we've updated the password, and all right, so uh, I think did this. Let's see. Yes, yeah, so what do we do? Scanning next? through the documentation here, because it's um, you have a service account, and you need to add like the editor role and the cloud SQL role to your service account. Okay. So this would be the service account for cloud run, right? 
Right. Should I make the cloud run? I mean, the cloud run instance doesn't exist yet. And if this was a brand new project, that would probably also mean I wouldn't have a service account yet. Right. Um, so should I run this command first? Should I run this? Uh, let's see. You probably need to, um, uh, let's see, copy that script to your... No. I'm to start by doing what the documentation says. Yeah, that sounds like a good plan. Um, God. Oops. And you need to one. go into the server directory there too. Okay. Perfect. Now I'm going to copy that yeah. script to the top. Right. And then I'm going to make it executable. Yeah. And maybe look at that script. You, you, I think you need to do some modifications there. Maybe okay. a step ahead. So, right. so check the script. God bless it. Go to that thing. All right. Cloud deploy. Okay. All right. Oh. So, so, so you will need your connection name and uh, that service account with the uh, 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 and the regions and stuff. So connection name, we grab that. And then the service yep. account doesn't exist yet. So I'm going to go to, well, that's not what I wanted to click. I am service yep. account. Service account. Um, mm -hmm. So these are some. A, you create a new one here, create service account. OK. Yeah, and then you can call it maybe server pod or cloud run or something. How about both? Oh, wow. Um, so email wants... address, we're going to let it. Oh, uh, create, this is. Create and continue. Yeah, I guess we don't really. This is a descriptive name, so I don't think we need much of a description. Yeah. And All now right. you need so what roles do I need? Uh, you need a basic editor. So if you uh, if you do the browser, it will say if you skip the right. search. Oh, oh. oh basic. basic. Oh, that's nice that I didn't find it. <laughs> <laughs> and then you need a cloud SQL client. Yeah, those are the ones. And okay. Uh, Nice. So, and you should got like an email this. address for that. Yeah. So I've copied the email address. And just you paste look it at into the name the I just chose. And now back to the script. And in you go. Yeah. Okay. So I went in US West 2. All right. Run mode is still production. Sounds and good. And this is fine. This is fine. This looks pretty good. Ah, uh, yep. Yeah, this one's important, as we discovered. You're right. And set nvars run mode serverless allow unauthenticated. Great. Allow un unauthenticated is not as scary as it sounds. It just means that people not authenticated with your Google Cloud project <laughs> can access it. So this means. People on the internet can access it. Right. Oh, so and then will, we can play the Insights app. Nice. Yeah. So it actually sort of adds two services. So, um, so you'll be able to access the um, Insights app or like view the logs and everything. Um, Give it okay. Go. Interesting. Fingers crossed everything's working here. Big money, big money, big money. <laughs> <laughs> um, Okay, so let's look at what other questions we've got. Uh, here's one, ServerPod UI is default or it's changeable? Now there's two things this could be about. One is, uh, the Insights app UI. Yeah. And the other one was the actual web app of the, of the default thing. Obviously, the, the web app is completely changeable because that's just an unopinionated Flutter app. But right. um, I don't know. I think this looks pretty good. Maybe they want dark mode. Oh, we have dark mode. Uh, oh. 
it, it uses your system settings. Maybe we should make it like an option so you can toggle through. Oh, um, I see. Oh, uh, maybe you stopped your server. So this is a little bit of a bug there. I did stop my server. It, it, it's still um still a beta version, so you may need to start that. Yeah, I absolutely started stopped everything. So yeah, of course that would stop working. All right, that's still building. Um, all right, let's look at some other questions here. Um this is an interesting one. Will Flutter make its own native serverless function support? You can deploy to the cloud simply with Flutter deploy. Um, the first version of this that will likely exist will be when there's pure Dart functions on Firebase. That is the likely... Um, I, I don't think they're ever going to be evocable from the Flutter CLI. But if you, uh, one day, Firebase will have pure Dart functions and then we'll be quite close to this. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, this is a little interesting one. Under the hood, what is the driver used to connect to Postgres? So, uh, I mean, we're using Postgres library. It's a, yeah, just it's a Dart that. library and then... Yeah. Um, yeah, that's what we're using. Pay no attention to this problem here. <laughs> this is the this is the uh, library to use. Oh damn it! Um, well, so it, it's not Dart three. No, what is the issue? It's failing. Oh yeah, I mean, or, there's just probably some like failing test or something. It's actually still uh, okay. really fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, 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 that's sort of interchangeable, I guess, um, because we built a layer on top of that, so, um, which is like the whole ORM with typed data and stuff. So, so the actual Postgres driver is that that's what we use, um, and it's been working great for us. It also uses the Postgres pool package to to pull connections. Mm, you yep. have many simultaneous uh, connections, so that's not an issue. Super um, important. Yeah. So, so we have tested it like with our stuff, uh, and that really works well. Oh, people so are far. pointing out that with the password, we could have just used double quotes, and then the single quote in the password would have been okay. Yeah, that is probably Multiple true. People <laughs> made that observation. <laughs> oh, here's another yeah, one. Yeah, we, we, we know. <laughs> <laughs> we need to learn to use YAML one day. <laughs> <laughs> so complicated. Uh, yeah, I'm really, really quite bad at... I, I consider myself just like, I don't know. I don't like YAML programming. I don't, I don't like it. I've never been able to learn Kubernetes because as soon as I try to point my brain at really dense YAML, especially like self-referential YAML because there's so many files in a Kubernetes cluster, it's like, I just... I can't do it. Yeah. So this uh, is taking a long time for some reason. Or, um, it is. It is taking a long time. But oh, something else is happening. Building and deploying new service, reconciling latest revision template. Yeah, I can ask this question in the meantime here. Um, yeah, I mean, you don't need Docker. You just need a Postgres connection. That's all you need, really. So the reason we use Docker is just it's very simple to use. Typically, <laughs> we'll see now. But um, uh, I mean, you can run Serverpod anywhere. You can run Dart. Hmm. So maybe you can check the console and see what it's done there. Yeah, I'm trying to see if that error is popping up anywhere. It's just spamming. Yeah. Now there's something going on with Cloud Run here, but I don't know what it is. I'm going to go back up. I am. Yeah, there's something. Something is a little funky here. Um, Cloud Run. I'm also noticing this, like a potential violation error up here that uh, I've never seen before. So I wonder if like this, deploy script is causing something to be upset 
Hmm. Oh, yeah. uh, um, the user provided the user provided container failed to start on the port defined 8080. Logs for this can be seen somewhere over here. See what it says. Failed to connect to the database. That's why we're not getting it. Uh, all right. Oh, I know why. I think I know why. No, you have this. This this is this should right. work. Um. So uh, must be some of the settings that is not correct. Uh, so if you can start looking at the um, Cloud Run instance, uh, and it should have like um, in the revision you can check the settings, you edit and deploy new revision. You can see there. Oh, oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, it yeah. set the database correctly or no. It's under connection. Yep. Yeah. No, nope. it sees the database. It thinks it should be able to talk to it. US yeah. West 2. That's what I said the region was. And then I typed that All right. so, somewhere. Yeah, US West 2. So actually, when if you can check the log at the very top of it, the first time it tries to connect to the database and fails, it will uh, print all the settings that we used. Mm. to try to connect to the database. So that can give us a hint if something is bigger. not correct. Um, database password. Oh, wait, Unix socket false, but we're definitely using a Unix socket. We're absolutely using a Unix socket, which we can tell because we have, I don't remember where this is. Uh, can, you, can you check the database uh, or the, the configuration file? Yeah, which one? Uh, config slash oh, yeah, uh, production. Oh, yeah. Yes. So here you, you need to specify that we used um, Use socket. It's Use Unix called, socket. Something like it's that. Unix socket. It's Unix socket. Is Unix socket? Yeah. So you need so like this. Yes, that's what we need. Okay. So now we uh, regenerate. I need to regenerate or no? No, that that's won't need to. when you try it. It doesn't hurt. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, so so you need to do, run the deployment script again, I guess. Yeah, yeah. All right. <sighs> yeah, so if you do dot slash. What was the cloud run deploy? Try that. I can only use control R. I have no memory for oh. previous commands. Um, if I want to use server pod on my own hosting, is it free? So I guess this is asking, is server pod free? Yeah, I mean, it's all open source. So the answer is yes. That's a that's an easy one. That's an easy one. Uh, I want to use RLS. I'm not going to lie. I don't know much about RLS. If you don't either, Victor, maybe we will look it up or skip. Uh, how yeah, can I so, with this? So uh, it doesn't really protect. Um, that's a way to um, limit users to specific tables and rows uh, in Postgres. So we do not support oh, that. Oh, so level. I read low level. Yeah, it's pretty low level. So um, I guess you can do it with um, uh, if you have um, raw SQ SQL queries, but um, otherwise um, we don't have like the ORM support for it. But you, would, you can, it, the idea is with ServerPod, you typically do it on your endpoints instead. So you limit access to the users on, on the endpoint level. Yeah, you can either ha have Postgres firmly um, enforce rules, or you can have your business logic, your Dart code, enforce the rules. Like, yeah. I know what endpoint I'm in, and I know what group the user has to be in, and are they? Uh, right. So, so we provide a lot of help on that level. 
we're still getting that error. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna refresh here. All right, well, we're also kind of coming up on time, so maybe we give yeah. it one more go. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, it did deploy. It looks like it. So you can yeah. you have a URL there. You can just uh, see if it's working. Go go to that URL and check if it's working. Yeah, it's up. Oh. All right. What what URL do we want to go to to actually see? So so what you need to do yeah, now to, do. To, to try this in the app, uh, you have that URL. Mm -hmm. uh, if you copy oh yeah, okay, copy it. and. Let's check if you go to the main file in your Flutter app. Uh, okay. Oh, well, so in the ma main. main, yeah, at the top of that file, you create a client, and uh, that's tell you where to connect. Oh, right, because we didn't deploy the Flutter app; we just deployed the server. I was somehow thinking we were yeah, going to yeah. get like, you know, Firebase hosting for our. Uh, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, uh, you can do that too. It's uh, it's a few more steps, but um, yeah. let let's try that for now. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Okay. Here we go. If this works, we're gonna be in, we're gonna be sitting pretty. All right. Let's see. Did the insights app deploy? No. So the insights app is having a little trouble. Wonder why. Oh, well, this launched, so um, put that over here real quick. Actually, let's let's do the thing first. Okay, so we're talking to the production database. So the first thing that we need to do is save a to-do. Boom. Fast. Did that really go to the server? Yeah. <laughs> That's really, I felt like local host. Um, okay, post to go. This is still the production thing. Save a to-do. Boom. Nice. We got Pretty it up great. on Google Cloud. So basically, great. you just need to, when you change the code, you do another deploy and you're good to go. Win. So that's like a super simple deployment. We made a more advanced too with like whole Terraform uh, mm -hmm. with if you want to do file uploads and, you know, Redis and the whole shebang, you, you have right. a uh, a guide for that too. Um, that takes a little bit of long time because you need to set up your own domain names and stuff like that. But if you just do something simple, this is definitely the way to do it, and it's you know it's pretty quick and easy. Mm -hmm. you just need to get yeah. all the passwords right, and <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> there's always yeah. some fiddling somewhere, I guess. Right, always, always. Yeah, there's. Speaking of that, let's see what's going on here. Oh, same error. Apparently, uh, oh, Insights has its own connection block, and we just didn't make the change there. So that's what's going on. Uh, yeah, that may be true. Yeah. Oh, I guess I already killed that. Um, anyway, in production, YAML, Insights server. Yeah, look at us not adding. Actually, no, that is. Uh, it should be the same database. So... Oh, yeah. OK. Wait, why did that? All right, well. Here's a here's a takeaway for you. You had yeah. the one type we had one typo we found in the docs where it said T company instead of session. Company, yeah. Instead so, of session. So, so we we made that part in before like the one or two release, but I guess we missed the documentation that in that spot. And then uh, for some but, reason the insight server isn't seeming to pick this up. Yeah, because the uh, insight server still says database. Unix socket false. You, yeah, that is weird. Um, but pretty darn, pretty darn good. Yeah, pretty uh, pretty I, good. I, I'm not sure why that's happening, but I'll I'll definitely try it out a second time. Maybe something didn't sync up when you did a. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Who knows? Maybe uh, there was like a deployment going on at the same time in the background or something like that. That would be my yeah. Best I don't know. Guess. weird, but anyway. Yeah. Uh, all right, folks. Um, I think we accomplished a lot today. We built a simple thing in ServerPod, talked to a local Postgres database, saw that working. It's now running on Google Cloud. We haven't deployed the uh, the Flutter web app, but you could put that on Firebase hosting quite simply or um, 
any other hosting, you know, choice that you like. And then we saw that working. So local host, um, fire, uh, local host build of the flutter app, which is in this window is talking to the production deploy of the back end. And it's doing it really fast. Holy smokes. Really fast. <laughs> <laughs> nice. nice. <laughs> uh, man, really, really cool. So, Victor, man, thanks for all the time and the energy that you've obviously got kind of like an unimaginable amount of time and energy that you've put into building ServerPod. Um, and, you know, now it's, getting to be ready so you're starting to advocate it and talk about it even yeah. having these nice release videos um any any final thoughts from you victor yeah i mean uh today we just we just scratched the surface of what you can do with server pod obviously we have support for everything from real-time communication authentication with social logins uh caching uh inter-server communication if you have a cluster of servers uh you can build stateful servers with a little bit more work. So there's, um, I mean, that's what we have already. And we are just building a whole lot of tools around this. Both the visual editor will come with a database viewer very soon. And, you know, you, you will be able to do your database migrations with server pods. And so that will take away a few of the steps that we made today too, uh, which will be really nice. Mm, right, right, right. Yeah, so, we have to manually apply those schemas right. queries. So so that will be all automatic in the future. Um, yeah, and go check it out, serverpod.dev. Nice. Um, where where can people yeah, where, where <laughs> can people like join? Do you have a Discord? Uh so so we have like a community on GitHub, the discussion stairs, okay. the best place to uh, to reach us. So we we check in there every day, answer questions and there's already, I mean, there are hundreds of apps being built with ServerPod already. Uh, so it's it's some really big companies. I, I'm not sure I can give the names here, but uh, <laughs> okay. I mean, there, there are some serious uh, apps being built with ServerPod, which is, is really cool to see. So it's, uh, I think we try to really minimize the effort to build build servers and making it really smooth. I think if you mm -hmm. compare like the amount of code you write with ServerPod with other frameworks, it's probably going, I think we're going to win all categories there. Um, yeah. I mean, based on what we just did. Um, yeah. Yeah. That was incredibly simple. I really love, gosh, I just loved, and I want to go back and cover one last time how this worked where you know, we write a simple method on the server and then we never, we never cracked open this MyPod client thing, but that's where the common stuff is going. I understand. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> so in here, this is the stuff shared by everybody. Yeah. So, so you can, you can open yeah, that. Should we peek at it. Yeah. Why not? Look at the to do class, for instance. So this is like the code that you would have had to write otherwise to do all mm -hmm. that stuff. It's, it's quite mm -hmm. a bit of stuff. To do the serialization and the communication with mm -hmm. the database. And it's really nice to be able to use the same objects. You know, you pull them from the database and you can send that object to the server. If you use like different protocols here, you need to sort of convert them somewhere along the way, right? So we handle mm -hmm. all those conversions for you. And you can specify, say you have a user info with passwords or hashed passwords, if you have passwords, I would suggest, but you can then you can just mask them from the protocol so they just work with the database. So you can set different scopes for where the information is visible. So you just specify that in the YAML file. Um, and you can also do, you can actually throw exceptions on the, on the server side and catch them on the client. Uh, so we can like serialize those exceptions, which can be a really smooth way to handle yeah, when show something- Yeah, error toast or something. Yeah, right. Uh, so so you, it's it's very seamless to work with server, but it's almost like you have the server and the client. It's like the same system. Obviously, there's yeah. a layer in between, but you just add the methods in the server and you just use them on the client. So, so that's, that's the, cool. the gist of it. 
Yeah, that's quite quite cool. The magic of of code generation. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, Victor, thanks for joining. Um, I had an absolute blast here. Everybody, I'm going to be traveling for a while. I'm going to be in Miami for IO Connect. Then I'll be in Paris for Flutter Connection. Then I'll be in Amsterdam for IO Connect again. And then lastly, I'll be in Berlin for uh, Flutter Con alongside DroidCon. So Observable Flutter is going to go on a little little summer holiday. And uh, we won't be back until mid-July, until after I return from... FlutterCon in Berlin. So, Victor, you were the final guest for the next probably two months. Yes. Um, but, uh, you know. I'll sure I meet you in person in Berlin. I'm giving, giving a talk there on nice. building multiplayer games with ServerPod. I was going to say, yeah, what are you, what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> what am I talking about? <laughs> but uh, I, I also, I used to be a game developer or I worked a lot mm. with game tools. So, uh, that's definitely nice. uh, something that I, I care about too. So I wanted to combine combine those into div, building some nice, nice, quite simple multiplayer game. Yeah, my my talk is related, but but different. Um, in in Berlin, my talk is titled uh, something like "A Year of Headaches: How Not to Build a Real Time <laughs> Multiplayer Game." <laughs> All right. And it's just like a nonstop story of misadventures and uh anyway i'm looking forward to your talk and i'm looking forward to that whole event so yeah it should be really good yeah okay victor thank you everybody who tuned in today thank you a lot of great questions we didn't really we were not able to get to them all but we did at least get to deploying this app to gcp so that was that was pretty great oh, uh cool. all right all right everybody uh that will do it for us today and uh until next time yeah Thanks for watching. Yeah, thank you.